good day everyone uh, thank you for having chosen to spend this time uh, with us uh, to understand how machine learning can help um, with the smarter audience targeting uh, mechanism i am dialan and uh, i am an analytics leader at tcs with about 25 years of experience i help companies in retail cpg travel tourism and hospitality industries to optimize performance and make better decisions with advanced analytics So here's what we'll cover today. We'll briefly touch upon the growing importance of analytics in business decision making. How the adoption of machine learning techniques can significantly improve the efficacy of your analytics programs. And finally, we will illustrate using an example how this is possible. Now let me begin by sharing with you some insights from a recent Gartner survey that explored what capabilities CMOs consider to be the most vital to deliver the marketing strategy. This survey was conducted with more than 600 marketing professionals in October 2018. And if you look at the responses, they clearly indicate that CMOs consider analytics to be the most vital to support the delivery of their marketing strategy. Of course, technology and customer experience are considered important as well, but less so. The survey also reports that among all the metrics being used to inform their marketing strategy, brand awareness is considered the most important this is followed by performance measures such as share of wallet brand health and share of voice return on investment measures a distant fourth in order of importance now the implications of these results are twofold one given its stated importance more investments will be made into building capabilities for analytics and with these investments flowing in expectations from analytics programs will increase and there will be a growing expectation to move beyond awareness parameters and measure the impact of these programs on performance measures such as brand health and return on investment so we may expect brand performance and roi measures to move higher in the hierarchy of metrics considered important for tracking the effectiveness of marketing strategy now this means that analytics programs will have to deliver more Now while traditional statistical methods will continue to be important newer approaches and methods need to be applied to improve the efficacy of analytics programs to drive marketing outcomes Now before we delve into these new methods in analytics here's a quick refresher on the analytics value chain right so at the very first step we have data management and prep this is the foundation of all analytics A survey done among more than 100 members of the Global CMO Council reveals that 40% of them believe that one of the biggest challenges is that their data is not unified, clean, complete, or accurate across all marketing systems. Therefore, effective management of your data is critical, and this includes data acquisition, storage, and processing. Moving on, exploratory analysis. and reporting plays a critical role to inform us about our current state now they can help us understand where we are and hold out the rear view mirror to inform us about the progress we've made they are useful because they allow us to learn from our past behaviors and understand how they might influence future outcomes examples are brand health dashboards reports on website traffic and reports on store footfalls Predictive analytics enables us to extrapolate what might happen in the future based on the events that have led up to the present situation. They involve the use of statistical models and forecasting techniques on large data sets of historical performance, and they are like headlamps telling us what lies ahead. And examples of predictive analytics are when we try to predict customer behavior and project trends in sales using that understanding. Moving on, and it allows business to understand alternative courses of action available in a likely future situation and it helps us choose the most suitable alternative for making the best decision so prescriptive analytics tells us whether we should accelerate slow down or make a turn and marketers can use these techniques to predict the likely outcome of various campaign activities and then choose the best one to achieve the maximum return on investment now all these methods are not new 
and uh, prescriptive and predictive models built using traditional statistical techniques have been used for several years. However, with evolving customer needs and increasing competition, there is a need to deliver more personalized messages and meaningful experiences to customers in order to stay ahead of competition. With larger investments in marketing programs, there is also a need to make more effective use of those dollars. Now, given these imperatives, analytics has evolved beyond traditional statistical models, and machine learning techniques are now, uh, are now being used to deliver more precise and timely insights for decision making. So, how can machine learning change the game plan? Statistical models work well in situations where the relationship between outcomes and their influencing parameters are linear, repeatable, and stable. But we all know that human behavior does not always conform to these conditions, and therefore statistical models do not always provide the most accurate results. Machine learning methods, on the other hand, do not pre-assume the nature of relationships between the parameters of interest. They learn from the data distribution and are more suitable to predict human behavior, which is not necessarily standard or repeatable. Machine learning can therefore provide more accurate results in such cases. Okay. Now, here are some areas where machine learning can be applied for better outcomes. The first one is on prediction. Machine learning can be used to predict the probability of a particular customer leaving the business and its associated revenue loss. This is in most uh, marketers would understand, very valuable when we are trying to predict churn. So having an accurate prediction can enable the business to design customized promotional activity to retain the specific customer. Machine learning can also be leveraged to measure the effectiveness of various interventions designed to reduce churn. Moving on, machine learning algorithms can also help in creating real-time personalized advertising across various digital channels through customized messages for customers based on their individual preferences. This enables the business to maximize the effectiveness of advertising campaigns and deliver more personalized experiences to customers as well. And then finally, another application where machine learning can be used is in segmentation. For effective personalization, a key prerequisite is to know your customer. And traditionally, companies have been using statistical techniques to execute customer segmentation on mass. Customers were segmented mainly on the basis of demographic data or prior product purchases. But now machine learning can enable us to treat each customer as a unique entity using personalized segmentation criteria captured along the customer journey, such as whether they opened the holiday email campaign, or whether they visited an advertised website, or whether they evaluated a product but did not buy it. Now these parameters keep changing, and machine learning techniques are robust enough to handle this in real time. I will now talk about an example where we enabled our customer to improve their campaign effectiveness significantly over and beyond the improvements they made using traditional statistical models in the past. Now, just a, a few words about this customer. This customer is a leading sports goods retailer with over 800 stores. And like everyone else, they are feeling the heat of competition. And being in the retail business, they are having to deal with encroachment from other brick and mortar stores as well as online competition. Their quest is to have sustained revenue growth through retaining existing customers and acquiring new ones. They are also engaged in a continuous effort to increase the basket value of their customer purchases. To do this, they run more than 20 direct mail campaigns every year. They spend millions of dollars on those campaigns and have been using the traditional approach to design them and evaluate their effectiveness. At this point, TCS was called upon to help them create a framework to design, implement, and evaluate the efficacy of one of their campaigns. So this was the game plan. So they had a specific direct mail campaign which was sent to about 15 million potential shoppers during the holiday season. The campaign involved a direct mailer with a, with a catalog featuring various items, some of which were on promotional offer. In fact, the customer runs several such campaigns through the year, and they wanted us to create a campaign management framework that was significantly better than their traditional method, and which could be used to evaluate any or all of their campaigns in the future. Now, to address this challenge, we followed a three-step approach. 
The first was to identify the right audience. The aim here was to identify incremental shoppers and not just prior intending customers. That is, to identify and target the campaign to those who will shop only because they received the offer, avoiding those who would anyway have bought without the campaign offer. At this stage, the machine learning method we used was a classification algorithm called Random Forest. Having done this, the next stage was to identify which specific campaign offer would appeal to each customer within the pre-selected audience. Right? So for example, a standard 20% price off could be personalized as maybe a $10 off on a basket size of $50 or a $20 off on a basket size of $100 or an equivalent reward points in the store's loyalty program. Right? So now the need was to identify who among these incremental shoppers could be provided each of these alternative offers depending upon the likely sale conversion. Here the technique that we used was called gradient boosting method which is one of the machine learning techniques again. Okay. And of course, if we do a good job in these first two steps, it follows that these potential shoppers would have a high likelihood of actually visiting a store and making a purchase by redeeming the coupon. So how did we go about doing this? The first step was to baseline the current process. So the customer had been using what would be called the RFM method or the traditional recency frequency monetary method to identify the target audience in the, in the past. Now this activity, though very important, is often overlooked. Very often customers do not share information with their analytics providers about their current methodologies and thereby missing the opportunity to benchmark the efficacy of their new analytics programs to evaluate the incremental benefits that they are achieving. So this was a critical step, and we spent sufficient time and effort with our customer to understand and baseline their current practices and the benefits they were achieving using their current methods. After having done this, we then moved on to the second phase, which involved collecting all the required data, performing an exploratory data analysis on the data, defining hypotheses, identifying relevant variables, testing those hypotheses, optimizing the variables, and finally building the models. Now, while this seems quite simple when it is explained or talked about, it is perhaps the most difficult stage of any analytics program. Now, we saw earlier that more than 40% of CMOs consider their data to be a significant challenge. And in fact, in most analytics programs, 60 to 70% of time and effort goes into preparing the data. At TCS, we have data preparation solutions that can accelerate the data cleaning, validation, and integration activities that are so crucial for any successful analytics program. And in this particular case, we deployed many of those solution accelerators for our customer. Moving on, the next step was then to test and productionalize the models that we had built. So we then moved the models into the customer's cloud platform and created an automated pipeline for running the models in predefined times. And then finally, after having run the campaign, we evaluated the efficacy of the model in being able to generate incremental outcomes over and beyond the traditional method that the customer had been using in the past. And since we had spent good effort in baselining the current process with help from our customer, we were able to establish clearly the incremental benefits that we were able to achieve using the machine learning framework that we had proposed. In the end, these were the incremental benefits our machine learning methods could deliver to the customer. First and foremost, we were able to achieve a 50% increase in instances of male recipients being interested enough to open it and read the contents. We achieved 150,000 incremental store visits, which was 250% more than what our customer was achieving using their traditional approach. And finally, all of this resulted in 3.26 million in incremental revenue for our customer. Now, we are now working with the customer to achieve 
this machine to implement this machine learning framework to manage other campaigns that they are running as well. Okay. Now, before we end, here's a quick recap of what we discussed today. First of all, analytics is considered most vital by CMOs to support their marketing strategy. We saw that in the Gartner survey that we presented. More investments are being made in analytics and expectations of returns on these investments are rising. Machine learning can significantly improve the results delivered by analytics programs and can help improve with this rising expectation for ROI. And finally, to prove the point, we discussed a specific example of how TCS applied machine learning to create a smarter audience targeting and engagement framework, which provided significant incremental benefits to the customer. Thank you for your attention. And I am now open to receive any questions that you might have. So you may go ahead and type in your questions into the window. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first question I have here uh, asks, what is the nature of data required for uh, this kind of analysis and um, what is the volume of data that we might need? Okay, so I will uh, attempt to answer that now. So in terms of the volume of data, what we typically, so since we are talking machine learning, uh, the more data, the better. Uh, obviously, processing capacities are far higher and uh, the technologies being adopted typically across customers' organizations are robust enough uh, to support uh, big data uh, analytics and related technologies. Uh, but to give a thumb rule, I would say uh, in this context, a minimum of about 100,000 uh, customers and uh, uh, their data, uh, you know, preferably at least uh, for the past two years. You know, so that um, I would say would perhaps be uh, the minimum volume uh, which will lend itself to a meaningful analysis. Coming to the other part of the question which is the nature of the data uh, that is needed. So first is the demographics, so the usual you know, um, uh, data about uh, you know, respondents, about their uh, income level, socioeconomic uh, background uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, details of their past purchases. Uh, in this category or in a similar product category. Um, uh, other things like, um, you know, information about their uh, geographical location, which gives us an idea about how far it is that they stay from the nearest store. So that also perhaps would be useful. So information like this. What would actually make a big difference is uh, if we are able to have um, a lot of uh, personally identifiable information related to that individual's uh, behavior. So some examples would be uh, what has been their response to previous campaigns that we've run. And uh, things like, uh, so did they receive the previous campaign and uh, did they receive or and open the campaign after they received it and after having opened it, did they actually go out and visit a store and then when they visited the store, did they actually make a purchase and then finally, what has been the value of that purchase. Right? So things like this, uh, uh, details about what they've specifically done uh, in the context of other similar campaigns that have been run in the past. So this kind of information uh, helps. And obviously, the richer the data, so meaning uh, the more the number of dimensions on which we have data, then uh, the analysis, therefore, will become more uh, intricate and elaborate. And the accuracy of the results that we get will be that much more uh, uh, you know, data that uh, we need. I hope that answers the question. Moving on uh, to the next question. Uh, this question asks, what are the skill sets needed uh, to execute a program of this nature? And what should we be prepared for? What kind of people do we need? Okay. So here, um, we, the, the, the essence of running a program like this is to have a secure data foundation. So we just talked about the kind of data that is needed. So fundamentally, you need a data foundation which is rich, which has all this kind of information, and which is organized in a way that can be readily accessed. Right? So 
you need two kinds of skills basically. So one is uh, fundamentally the data engineering skills to get your data foundation right. And the second skill set you need is data science. And I will come to each of these uh, separately. Data engineering skills are about ensuring that uh, you, know, you have all the tools and components uh, uh, and the skills needed to design and maintain a robust data architecture. So that's the foundation, your data architecture. And then you need uh, people with knowledge of uh, database querying um, uh, skills, right? Things like SQL, for instance, you know, would be uh, required. Obviously, the technologies and tools would vary depending upon, uh, you know, what the customers have adopted. But I'm just giving you examples, right? Uh, you will also need data warehousing and uh, ETL capabilities uh, within this team. Um, you will need big data uh, technologies uh, capabilities, so things like Hadoop and MapReduce, Hive, Pig, and uh, the entire Apache suite, Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, etc. So this is all to ensure that you have uh, your data organized and managed, um, uh, having an architecture which is amenable to uh, easy ac access and analysis. So once that is taken care uh, through all your data engineering skills, uh, you need a team which has adequate data science skills. Right? So here we are talking about a combination of technical skills, mathematical skills, business and domain understanding, which is very critical. And then a plus point would be communication abilities, all residing in the same individual. This is a challenge typically, but this is the ideal combination. Right? So from the data science front, you need uh, you know people with capabilities in uh, Python because uh, Python is now the most... Uh, uh, you know, widely used uh, open source uh, tool for performing machine learning uh, based data science methodologies. And of course, R and uh, SAS as well, uh, depending upon the tech stack that the customer has. And going with this, uh, programming capabilities in Java or C or C++. So these are typically uh, data science skills that you would need. And uh, obviously, you know, after you've done the analysis, there would be a need to communicate the results of the analysis across the rest of the organization so that they can understand it, and more importantly, they can take decisions out of it. So in this context, uh, data visualization capabilities uh, would be needed. Uh, so typically, you know, Tableau, Power BI uh, are used widely, but depending upon the customer's choice, you know, you could have, you know, specific uh, visualization tools, and it would help uh, to have people who have capabilities on those relevant uh, tools as well. So fundamentally, you need data engineering skills, you need data science skills, and in that, you need a mix of uh, coding capabilities as well as visualization capabilities. And uh, good communication skills, if they are present, are an added plus point. Okay, uh, one more question I have here, uh, which uh, talks about uh, benchmarking. So uh, the question says, um, how can we benchmark and how would we know whether the results we are getting from the campaign are good or whether they are not so good or bad? Right? Okay, so this is a, a very relevant and very appropriate question. Uh, the best way to evaluate whether your results are good enough uh, is to have a benchmark based on what the best in the competition has achieved. Now, the problem with this is that we would never know what the best has been, uh, and therefore, uh, there will be a lot of reliance on your vendor's experience uh, with other similar organizations in the same industry. Obviously, you know, uh, being able to benchmark against this, there could be challenges because there would obviously be confidentiality issues and uh, performance of uh, uh, competition campaigns uh, cannot be shared. Uh, however, uh, uh, if there is suitable masking for the customer's uh, you know, um, uh, brand names or business, you know, that could be considered. But what I would recommend the most is that uh, we build an internal database of the performance of past campaigns. So internal benchmarks, if we can build them, and if we can create um, uh, a mechanism by which these benchmarks keep getting enriched as we uh, you know, run campaigns from time to time. Uh, that serves as uh, the best possible measure for us to judge how good or bad we were. And in the case that, uh, you know, uh, that I just presented a little while ago, we had used internal benchmarks. And we compare, compared the results of our machine learning campaign 
against the best that the customer had done earlier using their prior methodology. And we could see that we had performed better than what we had done in the past. So on this basis, if we are able to set incremental benchmarks against what we've achieved in the past, then I think you know, we would have something uh, uh, very robust for us to judge how good we are. The next question asks, what were the performance metrics considered and what was the performance against them? Okay. The performance metrics considered were um, those that I presented to you a little while earlier. The first one was to look at the number of people who actually read our message, which was the number of opens. The second one was the number of people who actually acted on that message, which is whether they visited the store or not. And the third was, what was the value of purchases that they made and was that higher than what we would normally expect? Right? So that we measured in terms of the incremental revenue that we achieved versus the previous campaign. So these are the measures that we had used uh, against which I had shown you the uh, incremental performance measures. Thank you so much for your questions. Those were very interesting, and I hope you found, found the session uh, interesting and useful to you. If you do have any further questions, you may please email them uh, uh, to us, and we will get back to you with the responses and come back to you with any form of assistance you might need. Thank you so much.